Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back on the show. It's Football Fan Zone, and I have um, my very good friend, long time friend, big Everton fan in the studio with me on the show with me. Jacob, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's nice to be on your show. Yeah, I know. I know. We I know we've been trying to do this for a while. You know, uh, trying to get the right schedule. Um, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you once again. Sure. Like I would always, I always try to find time to come. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Before we get into it, man, you're an Everton fan. Um, you know, a lot of we don't see a lot of Nigerians, a lot of people grow that grew up in Nigeria as Everton fans. Can you give us a little backstory of how you became uh you be, you started supporting Everton? Okay, so uh, back then in school, uh, back then in secondary school, we used to have this argument about Barcelona. Then I was just a football fan. We used to have Barcelona, Manchester United, everybody. Then I had this VP then. That was a Aston Villa fan. And it was like, you people will be yelling, be shouting about, uh, if, uh, man, you are cool. Have you seen Aston Villa play? John Carudis, Agola, that, this, that. I was like, okay, I'll watch Aston Villa. And the first game I watched was Everton versus Aston Villa. And I ended up on the other side. And... <laughs> Funny thing was there was then jo uh, Joseph Yobo. Yeah, he had the he had the Nigerian influence. Yeah, it was one of the things that pushed me toward it. There was Pena, there was Baines. There were there, like, there were players that there were players that I just it yeah. was love at was love at first sight. Yes, awesome, awesome. Yeah, that, I mean that's good to know. That was good. To, funny, I never heard the story from you. Funny enough, oh, wow. <laughs> but um, let's get into it. Like Everton, um. Yeah, the big English side, always in the Premier League, a traditional team. Like they've always been, you know, uh, outside looking into the top four back in the like, let's say, ten years ago when Moyes was the coach. And you know, you guys were always almost at Europe, trying to get into Europe. If not, you know, no, we we got into Europe. What was exactly. the? It was the um, the now Europa League, um, the Cup. UEFA Cup then. We yeah. get into Europe now and then, yeah. But but then never the Champions League. Yeah. So uh, you know, seeing teams like Man City, uh, Tottenham, Tottenham were always there. But as in Tottenham, you know, with uh, Pochettino now getting constantly getting into the Champions League now, Newcastle. How does that make you feel as an Everton well, fan? Yeah, it gives me the hope that my time will come eventually. Gives me the hope that um, that traditional that traditional four has been broken. Uh, it's painful, it's not by Everton, but it just shows that um, there's no leaning towards anybody to have to be there because at some point you realize the political aspect of football whereby um, four teams are being protected ahead of everybody else. But now it seems that this protection has gone or even though they try to protect them, it still seemed like uh, people still broke the norm. And um, I've gotten to the level where everybody has the ability to spend. So it's now down to your manage managerial acumen, your skill, your your ability to perform now. So it, it just shows that my time will come. It might not be in this new season. It might not be two seasons from now. But it, shows, it just gives hope that there's a potential, there's a possibility. Anything can happen. Yeah, talking about your time will come. We thought it was almost time, you know, when Mosuri took over. Um, I'm sure you were excited. I don't know. I was. Yeah. I was, actually. Yeah, you were excited. And there were a lot of money going around. You guys were signing players, probably not the right players with hindsight. Now, it's like you guys are in some financial trouble. What's really going on in that aspect um, with, your, with your owners? Okay, so... Um, we have situations whereby we have situations whereby we've been unlucky um with signings. Now, for example, a player like Dominic Cavalewin should be a player that commands about sixty million in the market and is injured throughout the season. We have a player like Sigurd Sen that we signed for about forty five million and he has problems with the law. We have players like Yerimina that is arguably our best defender for the past five to ten years. 
arguably our best defender, barring John Stones, that is in Man City now. Um, being injured and not being able to play more than 10 games a season. Now, we have a situation whereby we bought a lot of players that are either injured or they grew out of form or they have issues with the law or they have to go. And we have to buy mediocre replacements. And now we have to pay those ones that are injured or on loan somewhere else and still pay the mediocre replacements that have to play. So it's a situation whereby, and we're finding we can't sell this player. For example, a player like Sigurdsson automatically did not have a resale value because he had an issue with the law. Yeah. We had to let him go. That's $45 million down the drain. A player like um, Yerimina that was signed for $28 million, was injured all through and has to go for free. And going for free is helping our financial situation because he's on 120k per week. We have players like um, we have players like uh, J- JPG, uh, Bamen, yeah. Bamen on loan and we pay majority of his salary. We had uh, Andre Gomez that was going well and all of a sudden he had that injury against yeah. Tottenham and he's on 120k per week. We had a player like Fabian Delp that was on 80k per week and was not playing game. So it's when you have the first team you buy, the players you sign to be the first team players, they are all injured or out one way or the other. It's not like, oh, okay, you intentionally go out to buy players to get injured or you intentionally go out to buy players to fail. But then things shit happens, that's the word. Right. And, right. and it happened to us. And um, yes, the board too could do well to give um, um, power to the director of football to run things without their influence, without Moshiri's influence in who to buy, without uh, Bill Ken Wright's influence on who to buy. So uh, there's a lot of things that, that are in play. The whole power play in the boardroom, so on and so forth. But I think, yeah, with the financial issues too, it seemed like we're spending too much and all that. And like last season, we had to sell Richard Lisson before the 30th of June. For because of Premier League sustainability rules, we had to sell him before the so we we had to sell him for whatever amount we could get at that point in time. We needed 50 million to balance the books because the physical year or the financial year will end by June 30th. Right. And that would be the three years uh, period that the financial analysis are done. Mm-hmm. So we needed to balance the book by then. And you have to sell him yeah. to balance the book so we don't go into administration. And even at balancing the book, we still have people that are saying we overspent and um, people suing us for one thing or the other. Mm-hmm. So it's it's difficult at this point, but I think um, it can get better. That's yeah. what I think. Yeah, we definitely don't want to see like a, a big club, huge club like Everton go down that way. We have club like Portsmouth, Bolton, that faced similar issues hopefully you guys can sort things out so then let's get back to this season like where where did it go wrong you know last season you guys survived just survived and then i mean the previous season before the last one you guys just survived and we're hoping that okay frank lampard um will be of course the with the financial issue but he brought some players in and uh he, I, and i'm sure you guys must have hoped that it will be better this season so where, where did it go wrong for you this season so i think Frank Lampard, as a coach, as a manager, I think he should focus on being a director of football. He has the pool with his name. He can sign quality young prospects. They want to play in a team that he's associated with. But tactically, as a manager, he's not there. Personally, when Benitez was sacked, I wanted Vito Pereira as the replacement of Benitez. But the English fans, because Vito Pereira was Mushiri's choice. Is that fact, the uh, Sporting Lisbon coach? Um, former Porto coach, I think. Porto. Oh, yeah, Porto. A yeah. former Porto coach. Uh, I think he, he went to Brazil after I didn't get the Everton job. Um, also, former Fenerbahce coach. I think right. Fena or Galata, sorry. I think one of the two. So, um, I wanted him, uh, but... Um, the fans wanted didn't want whomever was associated with Moshiri and um, um, Kia 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 Joba came 
I think that's his name, that super agent, the former agent of Tedez and Co. Yes, they didn't want anybody associated with him and Lampard was an English lad and, well, the English fans wanted Lampard, the English lad. And um, luckily, we had Cavalier win for that game against Crystal Palace, the game that changed everything. We had Dele Ali turning up in that 20 minutes and we turned a, a one-goal deficit. We were down to one and won the game 3-2. And that was how we we uh, escaped relegation last season. Oh, that's the season before the last. Yeah. So, um, even at that, um, I, the games didn't show that there was improvement in um, performance. But then I ruled that out to, oh, the players we had are not good enough. And then he started bringing in wonderful prospects like Onana, Ghana, James Ghana. He got in the senior man, uh, Ghana guy. He brought in some some players. And then he also brought in Neil Mopi, which I don't understand that signing. Do you understand? But then um, he brought in some of those players and I thought, okay, now these players look like they can ball. Mind you, Knowing the history of Kavalewin's injury and knowing that you let Richarlison go, we should have gotten someone. So he brought in Ganage, uh, brought in those players, and we found it difficult to score. Even though it was tactically, it was tacti- tactically behind. I don't, I don't believe him as a tactical coach. We were losing games. We couldn't defend. We couldn't attack. It was just there. I watched games and I was disappointed. And it should have been sacked as... We lost to Bournemouth twice in about, I think, seven days. And we lost to them by seven goals in both games. We wow. managed to score one against Bournemouth. A team that just got promoted. They struggled to score goals too at some point. Yes. No, we, we lost to Bournemouth seven goals in two games. And going into the World Cup, I would have thought the um, the board would have sacked Lampard then. But then Lamp- Lampard had this kind of cult following. They, it was more about sack the board. The protest was more about sack the board than sack the coach. Right. Eventually, they took initiative and sacked Lampard three days to the end of the transfer window in January. Meaning, we did not get, we, did, we still didn't get the striker we needed to get. Only for us to go and bring Eli Sims that is still developing in Sunderland on loan. Only for us to go and get him back into the team and not use him. Scott he was Scott 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 Chelsea, 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 yes. Yeah, <laughs> I, and not use him. And the fact that Eli Sim is a better second striker, not a top nine. Do you understand? He needs, he needs someone to partner with so we we as Everton, the way we play, we play with a sole striker with wingers to run off them. We we play with a striker that with since the advent of Dominic Cavalier, even before Cavalier win, the Lukaku's, the Duncan Ferguson, for years, even the short man in Saint Kyle were players that could jump, that could use their head, they could use their head to flick on passes as centre forwards, whereby Pina and Co could run in. They, they they play as deep or even though they also score. So it, 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 we didn't have that going. And because we did not have that going, we couldn't score. But then uh, we got in Sean Dyche, who I still don't think my uh, my jury is still out on him. I still don't think he's the right man for the job. I think he was good for our survival, but I don't think he's the one to take us forward. Because I, I, I see us struggling again this season. I'm actually open for a mid-table finish, so I don't have a high blood pressure. Just <laughs> end in the middle, no excitement. I don't want any excitement this season. So, uh, and I, I don't see, one of the reasons why I don't see him, because I don't see his pool, like the kind of players that will come to him, to come to Everton because of Sunday. Yeah. Now, look at it. There are a lot of quality players on, as free agents currently. But guess what? Everton won't get those ones. Won't be able to get them. A lot of quality players relegated. I'm sure they have relegation release clauses. We won't be able to get them either. So I'm still 
looking at what the transfer window will bring mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll decide going forward from there. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, so let's touch on some of your players, right? To you, what player disappointed you most this season? This season, what player disappointed me the most this season? Well, if I'm to look through the players, well, Mope, I didn't expect him to. I was, I, I was expecting little of Mope, so I can't say he disappointed me. He just, he was just there. I would say Demara Gray. Mm. I would say Demara Gray. I think he has the potential to be more, but his decision making is terrible for someone that is entering the prime or is in the prime of his football years. Yeah. He still plays like he's still a um a young player. He plays as if he's still a fresh kid on the block, like a twenty year old. Uh he plays like he has the knowledge of a twenty year old. But I think he has I still think he has the potential to be better. I just needs to work on his decision. His decision making. Yeah, yeah. I think Timar agree, yes. Yeah, so for you, the flipped out question, who were you more, uh, most excited by? Who impressed you the most? Who impressed me the most? Well, I'll still say the same thing again. Like I said, I didn't expect so much from Moppy. Uh, and now I'll say the same thing with Pickford. Pickford is up there. He's England's number one. So whatever he does, is should be expected. To any saves he pull, should be expected. Do you understand? Um, so I will take Pickford out of it. Mm -hmm. Um uh looking uh now not Takoski. Well um I'll say Dukuri mm. with um the last the the I'll say between McNeil and Dukuri because if we are to cancel out everything Lampard did and assume the season started from January. Um, Dukure and McNeil are the reasons why we are the reason we did not relegate. So it will be between Dukure and McNeil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. McNeil, so, McNeil had a familiar face in Sean Dyche, you know, someone he has always worked with. So, yeah, so that helped that game against Brighton. Oh, what a game! That game was that game was Dukure won the game, actually. Yeah, McNeil scored those other goals, but you see, we were two goals up before we even knew the game had started. I'd never even turned on the TV <laughs> because I was I was I was expecting a loss. Yeah, I wouldn't like to you a loss or a draw. So I was going to come into the game like 20 minutes or 30 minutes into the game. Then I saw this notification from my Everton Nigeria group. Shout out to them by the way. And they were like, We've scored. Again, we've scored again. Goal again. I was like, I was like, oh, how how is this happening? And I put it on, we score a third goal. I'm like, wow. So that's that game was fantastic. And Tukuri was on fire. And the fact that he was our makeshift striker. He was our makeshift striker. Even though he was playing behind whomever he was going to play. But it was our makeshift striker. And those games that TCL cameoed, wonderful. TCL still has it as far as his feet. Mm. But yeah, those that game, the Korea McNeil, they really came they really came good for us towards the end of yes, and James Ghana, honorable mention. Hmm. I haven't seen too much of him. Yeah, in the last few games of the season, the guy showed that oh, he could be a maestro for us. Mm. So yeah. Mm. Yeah, the last game of the season they played in right back against Bournemouth when our right back was injured, um both right backs injured. Our uh, left back was injured. McNeil played on left back. He played on right back, and it was it was exceptional. It was phenomenal. Like um, our guy who always say phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, some of your players, I didn't hear you mention. Of course, our very own Alex Wobi. Um, I think I think he, he went. It was him and Mc, was it him and Pickford. They went through with some awards. I can't remember which. Yes. Thing. Yes. yes. The reason why I wouldn't mention it would be is um, like Spider-Man. With great powers comes great responsibilities. Um, I think it would be has the ability to do way more than he's doing. I think he has the ability to do way more. Like I said with Demarai Gray, 
it was just in the middle for me. The Mariah Gray's decision, the same thing with Iwobi. Iwobi's decisions, he needs to work on them. He yeah. needs to work on them. That's the difference between a world-class player and the other players. Okay, yeah. He has the potential to be that kind of player. Like, it's been... He, he's had the... Like, the Mariah Gray, he's had the potential for how it's many years? Time. Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand? So, he, he keeps... Like you keep being the potential player, being the potential player. When do you grow out of the potential player? He was good by I was yeah, good. He made eight or six assists this season, yes, and he created a lot of chances. But then that's on paper. But with the eye test, you see those chances created and you see the pass was fractions too wide. But to be it will be counted as chances created. You see, it was a, a quarter of a, of, a, of a centimeter too short. It should be counted as chances created. So these are the things that you need to be able to measure it. Now, I can't mention a Kevin De Bruyne. And you tell me that it's not perfect. Iwobi should be getting to the level. I'm not even saying it should be Kevin De Bruyne. It should be getting to the level of Madison. That's what I think. Yeah, I think I agree. I absolutely agree with that. I agree with that. So now uh, let's go to a segment of quick fire questions. I just ask you some quick fire questions and um, get your answer. If um, yeah. 70 million comes in for Jerome Pickford, are you selling or are you keeping? Sell. <laughs> All right. Uh, the fate of the universe depends on the penalty kick. Any Everton player, past or present, who are you picking? Who is picking? Everton Banks. <laughs> I said that coming. So, um, I want you to rank these Everton players without knowing the next one from one to five, right? Sure. Okay. So, first one, Baines. Baines, two. Two. Lukaku. Lukaku, three. Uh, Duncan Ferguson. Duncan Ferguson, four. Four. Uh, James Rodriguez. James. James Rodriguez. Five. Five. Um, uh, Phil Jagielka. Oh, wow. Okay. It goes to one, then. <laughs> All right. Um, so I was going to ask some you to describe some players in three words, three words or less. Okay. Missing Hoggets. Um, for lack of better word, and I don't want to be rude and it's human. Um, incompetent. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, got a gay. Um, experienced. New Mopi. Useless. <laughs> Michael Keane. <laughs> Inconsistent. Yeah. I agree with that. Tom Davies. Sold. <laughs> Alex Iwobi. Can be better. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, man, this is, you know, the much our, our time can take. I have many more questions, but I don't want to keep going just uh, just to save time. But it was, it, was, it was nice to have you, man. It was nice to have you and um, that, you know, you find time to come back. Sure, sure, sure. I I will try to come back. If not to talk about everything, just talk about general football stuff. Yeah. Um yeah. I'll I will always try to be available. Awesome. Be available. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks guys. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Bye.